Hello everyone. A man was talking to his lawyer about a divorce. What are your reasons for the divorce? The lawyer asked. It's my wife's manners. She has such bad table manners that she is disgracing the whole family, said the man. That's bad. How long have you been married? The lawyer asked. Ten years, the man said. Oh, if you have been able to put up with your table manners for ten years, I can't understand why you want a divorce now, the lawyer said. Well, said the man, I did not know it before. I just bought a book on etiquette this morning. Friends, Today's gospel is a simple story with a profound message. One day, a leading Pharisee had invited Jesus to a meal. People were observing Jesus closely to see if he would break the law of the Sabbath and heal a man suffering from dropsy who was seated right in front of Jesus. Jesus was known to heal people even on the Sabbath. So, he healed the man and sent him away. Meanwhile, Jesus had observed how some of the guests had chosen places of honor for themselves. So he responded with a parable to teach them how to behave at feasts. His advice is simple and clear. He told the guests that at a wedding feast or at any important event, they should not take the seats of honor on their own initiative. This is just in case the host had invited someone more important than them and might ask them to give up their place and move to the least honorable seat. Such situations can lead to embarrassment and shame. On the contrary, if they would take the least seat, the reverse might take place. The host might ask them to take a better seat and in doing so, Rather than being shamed, they would be honored in the presence of all the guests. Friends, the guests at the banquet were probably annoyed and embarrassed by Jesus' comments and advice. But Jesus had to tell them because they were the people who needed to be saved. Jesus was not trying to teach them table manners or dining etiquette or public behavior. Rather, he used the occasion to tell them and all his followers about a spiritual truth, namely about preparation for the feast to be held in the kingdom of God at the end of time or at the end of our life on earth. God is the host of the banquet and the invitation is open to all people. However, the invitation to attend the feast in the kingdom of God must be accepted and responded with humility and not with pride and arrogance. For God himself will make the final seating arrangements. God alone decides who will be seated at the most honorable place and who at the least honorable seat. That is to say, the Lord will humble the one who exalts himself, but will raise up the one who humbles himself. Jesus is an example of the exaltation that God will grant to every humble believer. Jesus is fully God, yet he humbled himself by dying on the cross and therefore God highly exalted him. Friends, Jesus also spoke to the Pharisee who was hosting the banquet in his home. He recommended that the next time he held a party, he should not just invite his family, friends and rich neighbors and those who can reciprocate, but invite all those who cannot return the favor, such as the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and then he will receive the reward of eternal life. Friends, in today's Gospel, therefore Jesus teaches us two things. One, Jesus teaches us that we should not overestimate our own importance and put ourselves to public shame and embarrassment. Instead, we must humble ourselves before God and others in order to obtain the grace of God and the reward of eternal life. 2. Jesus teaches us 
that we should not honor only those who are distinguished, but also ordinary people, and be compassionate and kind and generous to the poor, or help those who are unable to return the favor, for the works of charity are better than works of pride. Amen. God bless you.